saying that we're saying that it didn't happen is a comedy throwaway line in that, of course it bloody happened because I fire a laser at the moon and it sends it back. It's a silly thing to say. <laughs> with the distance the return signal comes if you've got a speed of light that's been debunked by quantum mechanics. Correct, Rebel? Distance to the moon can actually be measured using laser. Frickin' laser beam! With centimeter precision because the astronauts who were there... Yeah, that's real. <laughs> yeah, I'm that, sorry. I was, I was... <laughs> We're going to have to point out that these return signals, these astronauts going, what are they going through? to get there. We are breathing gas, guys. What you're claiming cannot exist. Okay, let's break that down for the guys in the audience on screen now. According to this guy, men have travelled from here, is this about Florida? Somewhere around here-ish. Out, past the high-pressure gas that we're all breathing, and into an area that's claimed to be 10 to the minus 17 tor. That's a sky vacuum. If the sky was a vacuum then the high-pressure gas in this CGI image that's obviously CGI, because he's disclaimed that, would fill this area. Because if the model he created in his CGI rendering had the second law of thermodynamics applied to it, then entropy law would apply to it. And gas, which expands at high speeds in all directions, all vectors, wants to fill whatever space it has available to it. It's called entropy. Second law of thermodynamics. So, if men can traverse past the sky, pressurised gas, and enter a sky vacuum, then so would the gas. Rockets don't pass a line in the sky called the Kármán line and wave goodbye to gas pressure. The gas would also continue in whatever vector it's travelling at a high velocity filling the area of volume until it reached equilibrium which would mean we'd have no gas because it would all be spreading out in this area that's enormous according to them a vast space for the gas to fill oh what do you know they call it space so this would be an area of volume for the gas we're breathing to fill meaning that the claimed journey to put retro reflectors onto the moon took place in a second law of thermodynamics violation sky vacuum that is definitely not real. There was no journey through a sky vacuum. We'd have no gas to breathe. If men can traverse the sky through the pressure, then so can the pressure. That's what pressure is, the force it exerts on the walls of its containment. And if there is no containment, as depicted in this picture, then the gas would fill the space and we'd all be dead. Debunking the moon landing and any claim that we're travelling through sky vacuums to put retro reflectors on the moon when those stories of return signals with lasers from the moon was claimed before they even made up the lies of traveling through sky vacuum. He's been ad homing us, calling us flirts. His biggest enemy is not us, his natural law. Yeah, his mathematics acumen is hovering below his geometric acumen too, the freaking clown show. This guy spends the whole video with his triangulation crap that he screwed up with about 30 different assumptions, one including a flat Earth. And now all of a sudden at the end of the video, voila, we know it because of radar. What the hell is that? What do you got, ADHD? I didn't hear anything about the radar in the beginning. It was all your triangulation horseshit. The out of the non sequitur. Yeah, so back to the retro reflectors uh, in the second law of thermodynamics violation, they have purportedly... Uh, shot a laser in 1961 and bounced it off their fairy tale moon. So why did they need the retro reflectors, you retro retard Mortimer? Left reflectors there. And that's actually a way to oh. test <laughs> that people have actually been on the moon. Those reflectors are there. and you. Well, so if they hadn't been to the moon, we wouldn't get the reflection. So therefore, quantum eraser has quite literally debunked your premise as false then. So, but for the fact that men have been there, we wouldn't get reflections. We do get reflections prior to men being there. Therefore, men couldn't have been there. 
It's an unnecessary lie. Hey, everyone, can I, can I add something to this? You can. Yeah, Welcome, Brian Logic. Actually, I'm going to go with no. I got a point there. It's something here. It's so stupid, right? When you bring up to them that they were already bouncing, claiming to be bouncing things off the moon, uh, signals off the moon, they say, yeah, but with the retro, retro reflectors, you have to be more precise. So they use a microwave. All they're doing is calculating the same thing, but differently using microwaves. That's all they're doing. And they're using mm -hmm. a two-way speed light calculation, which is only an average, which is based on a globe out. Wavelength. wavelength of light. Uh, wavelength? Debunking gravity? Quantum mechanics? Um, we'll come to that another day. <laughs> you need them to be able to use laser to measure the distance to the moon, which, again, we can. No, you can't. You can presuppose the return timings based on heliocentric assumptions. But, of course, that's just as fake as mathematics, right? What? Again, what an outrage to a mathematician on the panel. See ya. Yeah, dickhead. Bye-bye. Let him know we sent you. Nathan Oakley, 1980. <laughs> this is a chain projector. It's just projecting wow. all over the place. Look at this clown. Mathematics. Jesus, you'd fail third grade geometry, sunshine. Ass clown. Well, he just, he just showed there with his last claim there that... Uh, he doesn't understand what the two-way speed of light calculation is. He thinks that's a measurement. If he knows so much about mathematics, how come he doesn't understand it as a, just a calculation? If they would send the signal from the Earth to the Moon, nothing will be reflected that they will be able to register. Because by the time it is reflected, which is what, four seconds later, the signal bouncing back, the Earth would be in a completely different position, miles away from the origin point which is where the signal will be reflected back at. Okay. So let me the just whole try and... idea of, of the point. signal okay, being just... registered from the reflectors, yeah. I've got you. Let me just try and summarize your point. If we assume orbital motion and we assume Earth has a radius value that you can't measure and has been debunked by the black swan, and that assumed debunked radius value is transposable onto Venus with orbital motions derived from Kepler, then we can have... A second law of thermodynamics violation trip to the moon to deposit retro reflectors that can only reflect the light directly back to the source. Given that this reflector that's been left after a second law of thermodynamics violation trip to the moon and in an acclaimed orbital motion, our motion would put us in a different location in said presupposition of an orbital heliocentric assumption with our based assumptions and Venus based R based assumptions and Kepler's third law and Hugens and all the rest of it. And a second law of thermodynamics <laughs> violation trip to the moon would mean that we'd be in a different position. Therefore, we wouldn't get light back based on their own narrative in their own story. Anytime anyone mentions the so called reflectors on so called moon surface, um, because it only takes 10 seconds to check out what the retro reflectors actually are. And if anybody wants to Google the image, paste it in the chat, I just don't have the means right now, you will see that there's not the mirrors. There are conjugate mirrors. Anybody here knows what conjugate mirror is? Hold on, are we okay. arguing about how the gas lamp in Narnia works? Yeah, yeah. So but the conjugate mirror is 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 a material phenomenon. Like it's very well known, essentially the mirror that reflects the signal, whether it's light or whatever the wave, electromagnetic radio wave, uh, exactly to the same origin as signal. So it doesn't bounce the light; it bounces the light directly back at the origin. That's what they claim to put on the moon, which means. Essentially, it looks like um, a surface with triangles, like uh, panels for soundproofing that you might have, um, Nathan, with like a I've seen cone, them, I've triangular seen. cone sticking out from it. Sure, sure. I've seen what they claim to be on there, the retro reflectors. I've seen them. I know what they look like. What that means with, within heliocentric model is that they will never, even if it's true, right, we'll concede the point for the moment as a start experiment. If we're going to play, yeah. How does the gas lamp work? You can add even more fuel to the fire, can't you? But so if you're firing the laser from Earth to something 250,000 miles away, 
and you're using the pre-assumed speed of light, two-way speed of light to do it, then when you there is going to be a timing difference between firing the laser and its arrival at the moon. So you would also have to kind of shoot ahead um, of where the laser is going to intercept with the moon after that time difference, because you've got 250,000 miles. So it's going to add sure. a lag. So you've got to predict yeah. it. It's called leading the target, yes. Even yeah. if you do that. In, that in a heliocentric orbital motion, you would have to lead the target, but we're not. And, you know, the, moving further forward in time, we've debunked all of these premises at their foundations rather than within them. So although I'm not trying to be derogatory when I say it's 2000 old and busted argument, it's because it has to work within the premise that they used to win. Like talking about how the Earth curve calculator wouldn't work, it's still working within the premise that Earth has a sphere, Earth, edge horizon at a tangent point. The edge of the globe is a straight line. Atmospheric refraction. And objects are refracted or not refracted with respect to it and how much they are or aren't. The things like that is a similar vein to this. When Adam reiterated the gas lamp burning in Narnia it's to say that if, if you come up with an objection of how something operates in the area of Narnia then would it be more sensible to point out that Narnia isn't real and why or how the gas lamp couldn't necessarily be working off the vapors given off by the snow as claimed in the narrative of Narnia but it could only be there because there's pipes in both. Narnia that doesn't exist or in this case tracking targets in an orbital motion that's presupposed, therefore doesn't exist. It only exists in the maths. And it sharpens the edge for, for, for people who don't know why we can just cut these things off the knees. And they may not know that. Those of you who are listening, that is, I'm talking uh, directly to the audience. Sorry, go ahead. I remember now, I rem sorry, just before Rebel goes, I remember now what it was that they changed. Back in 2015, 2016, they were claiming to just shoot a laser and get a direct signal back. Right, which was debunked by their own uh, rotation and moon uh, lunar orbit. So what they said, they went away for a year or two, they came back probably 2017 or something, 2018, with the same nonsense, but claimed they were shooting trillions of lasers, uh, laser, uh, like trillions of, uh, of uh, signals, and one of them will always hit the target and get a return signal. That was what they, that's how they, that's sure. how they jumbled it up. Yeah, I remember, yeah. it was Cox the <laughs> The moon landings happened, and it's, it's nonsensical. We go to the moon, yes, that's the enemy. There's no information, content, or use in debating it anymore. Right. Tell me where we're going in respect to the fact that ultimately this, this completely proves the fact that they went there. Well, first of all, I don't, I don't even accept that it needs proving. Could it have been true that the moon landings were faked? Well, you know the script that I wrote? Yes. Did you read it? No. No. There we go. Does it say something about it the says moon something like, it's, it's a comedy throwaway line. I'm not saying that we're saying that it didn't happen. It's a comedy throwaway line in that, of course it bloody happened because I fire a, a laser at the moon and it sends it back. It's a silly thing to have said. Where are we going and what does it prove or not prove and uh, who cares? We're going to the laser, laser, laser beam. Frickin' laser beam! <laughs> we're going to the lunar... We're going to the... Where are we going? Where are we going? Donald Observatory. I'm not saying that we're saying that it didn't happen. It's a comedy throwaway line in that, of course it bloody happened because I fire a laser at the moon. Frickin' laser! And it sends it back. It's a silly thing to have said. Um, and he had to be convinced by the producer of what the validation or point of going to do it was. And the point was exactly the same as Mortimer or whatever he's called used. Which is to say, it, it's, it's useful because it demonstrates that we are on a sphere Earth because we wouldn't have the re return signal unless we dropped the retro reflectors. So that's what Cox had to go and punt back in the day when he was being bitch-whipped around by his producers at the BBC. Where are we going? Where are we going? Donald Observatory. Well, that then expands on to Rebel's original point. Okay, so you're saying we bombard it with a load of lasers. Frickin' laser beams! Which was what Cox was covering. Okay, so you barrage it with lasers, one will hit. What about the fact that you've moved position? when the signal claimed to be returned from those style of retro reflectors can only, according to its design, return to its original source. Well, if it's doing that as per the design spec, then it's going to be re returning the light to a position that Earth isn't in anymore, even if you've barraged it with them. 
So one or two coming back to a position that it's not at anymore. So either they're faulty, but then you're into, if we can argue that the retro reflectors can somehow send them off in different directions furiously, you're into arguing about how retro reflectors work in a sky vacuum, in a presupposed orbital motion, rather than cutting it off at the knees, because you don't have to argue about how retro reflectors work. But it's still useful to know. I'm not putting this down. I want to stress that.